What's up, Droners? Brennan Edwards here with Droner Tech, brought to you by Remote Pilot 101, and we're here to do Droner News, and we got some dope stories, so let's jump into it. All right, so up first, I want to talk to you guys about the Scadio 2. Now, if you haven't heard of the Scadio 2, it made some big waves in the drone industry about a year ago, in 2019, when it came out because mostly, mostly because of its object avoidance. This drone was touting the ability to have real-time object avoidance. And if you're a DJI pilot like I am, then when you think of object avoidance, what you think is that your drone can sense the object in front of it and stop. That's what DJI drones do. They'll, hey, there's danger, I'm just gonna stop and it stops and you have to fly it around. But what the Scadio drone does is it actually flies around that obstacle. It doesn't stop. So it automatically just sees what it is and goes around it. Now, when this drone came out, it was a big deal and it was a lot of excitement behind it, but you couldn't get your hands on it. They only had like an 80 person uh, company and they were hand building and testing each one of these drones. So it was very, very rare that anybody can get their hands on one of them because it's just the, the, the demand was way too big for the supply. And there also were some problems with it landing. No, it wouldn't run into any things when it was flying in, into trees and all that. It wouldn't do that. It would just crash while it was landing for some reason. And also on top of that, obviously you couldn't get your hands on it. So they have re-released it and now they're saying there's not gonna be any problems with that with demand as well as they actually turned the case into a landing pad to ensure that the landing is gonna work well. And I think it uses the sensors to help it land. Now this drone could be a big deal um, considering the price point. This drone is retailing at $999, which is the poor man's way of saying a thousand to make you wanna buy it more. But also on top of that, you can get the controller with it for $150 more. Now when I say controller, there's actually two different Different kind of controllers for it. There's a beacon, aka what I call a wand, and then a regular like drone controller, which actually is comes from a, the parrot uh, controller. But well, that, that's neither here nor there. The wand is kind of one of those controllers that you stick in your pocket and you're like, hey, follow me and keep the camera on me, and it does that for you. It has a few basic controls on it, and then the controller is a drone controller. And the co drone controller gives you about two miles worth of distance on it. And the wand gives you quite a bit of distance. Even if it gets in, in, uh, in be something in between you and the camera, the wand allows the GPS location to tell the drone where you are. So even if it gets stuck behind an obstacle, it flies around the obstacle and still comes back to find you. So we're talking about some extremely advanced autonomous flying as well as camera work, since the drone says it can keep its camera on you with the wand, which I think is pretty impressive. The camera on this drone is also pretty interesting. It's 4K60, and like I told you, the price point is roughly half of a Mavic 2 Pro, and you're getting a camera that apparently might be equivalent. Gonna have to look into that and see, but either way, that is a much cheaper 4K60 camera, and it's already out, so maybe it's worth checking out. And if you were one of the lucky few who actually did get your hands on one of these Scadio drones, let me know what your experience was. Could you actually crash it? Because they're called the uncrashable drone. Could you crash it? Will it fly around the trees? And if you want to learn more about it, you actually can go right over to my homie Kelly's Ready Set Drone page on YouTube. And he actually had the drone and got to fly it around and do a review. So definitely worth checking out. Up next, in the University of Zurich in Switzerland, they have come up with some autonomous flying drones that can do some things that are pretty difficult. Now, if you know what acrobatic FPV flying is, or even FPV racing, the thing that really makes it entrancing is the ability to almost dance in the sky, to do long, elongated circles with the camera pointing to the circle, to do barrel rolls, to all these really hard things to do that typically take hundreds of hours to be able to learn how to do successfully without crashing. Well, they're saying that they have been able to teach their autonomous drones how to do these incredibly different difficult moves. Now, they're not looking to, well, they're, they're claiming not to want to replace these drone pilots for the moves that they're doing, but they are claiming that some of these moves can make the drone's flights more efficient when you're doing autonomous flights. And the way that these drones are able to achieve these types of crazy flights is, well, they do the same thing we do, but like a computer, they train. And the way they train is through the flight simulators. If they want these drones to learn one of these new, extremely difficult moves, they tell them to move and say, hey, Learn how to do it in this flight simulator. In about six hours, the computer have gone through hundreds of times of the simulation and will have it perfected. And then they're ready to transfer it over to a real drone and voila, here we are. You have a drone flying like somebody who put hundreds of hours into it. And watching the video, you can see these drones are doing some pretty impressive flights. I'm still learning how to do FPV flights and I can tell you firsthand, it is very difficult to do a lot of these type of moves and the way that they're doing them in these small spaces, impressive. I'm curious to what this is gonna to translate to down the line, but I think this is one of those things that is definitely worth keeping your eyes on because, well, the drones are flying themselves. What do we need it for? Up next, the pettiest drone advertising in history possibly is awarded to Parrot. 
Parrot came at DJI. They pretty much said, do not trust Chinese made drones because we're here for you, you don't even have to do it. And that's before they launched the drone. That's the pre-advertising to them launching a new drone. They pretty much are like, can you trust your Chinese drone? Do you really want to have these Chinese technologies in your home? Like it was pretty direct and pretty directly at DJI considering they're the 80% shareholder of the entire drone market and is a Chinese based company. So on June 30th, they dropped the bombshell. They announced the Anafi USA. Yes, they literally called it the USA drone, the Anafi USA. They were like, hey, we're gonna make a drone that is specifically for government and enterprise use. And what they were thinking was, you can't buy the DJI ones. The Trump administration has pretty much said that they're not gonna, no matter what DJI does, they're not gonna use those for the government officials and the government people that are using them, whether it be with wildlife, with surveying, whatever they're doing with it, with the government, nah. Firefighters, not allowed to use it. So they built a drone that had 32 times optical zoom, which is the most zoom on any drone ever, as well as infrared camera and 4K capabilities. This drone can fly for like 35 minutes, which is a long flight time. It only weighs like a pound and a half. And what's really cool is if you're a first responder, sometimes every second counts. And this drone can literally turn on and take off in under 55 seconds. No, it doesn't need GPS lock for that because it can fly without that. And it'll get the GPS lock after it's in the air, which is a counterpoint to how all DJI drones really fly because they all need that satellite lock to take off. One of the biggest points of this drone is the safety of the encryption. Even if you crash this drone and somebody steals the memory card from it, is everything is encrypted, super encrypted, so that nobody would even be able to get your information. So it's super encrypted, has you know comparable flight times and camera capabilities of all the DJI drones, Fla takes off super fast, because if you're a first responder or like a firefighter, obviously that's really important. It's a pretty impressive list of things it can do, right? And you're like, okay, well, those capabilities make it feel like it should probably cost somewhere between like, a Mavic or like or a Phantom or you know even a little maybe a little bit more maybe even twice as much a Mavic as a Mavic or a Phantom and if you know Mavic and Phantoms you're looking to spend around two thousand dollars they're like nah 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 this is for the government they got the money this will be seven thousand dollars per drone originally when this drone uh, dropped or the leaks came out of that this drone was going to come out everyone thought it was going to be a consumer drone which is leading people still to believe that there might be a consumer version coming out because why not. They're gonna make enough money off the government, so why can't they just you know, hook us up with more options as consumers? And the other thing that made this even more petty is that Paris not an American company either. Even though they named it the, 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 named the USA drone, this is technically a French company. So they're looking to corner that US market and they're looking to be extremely petty in the way that they go after DJI just to let them know like, you can't compete with us so we can say what we want and you can't do anything about it. DJI is super petty. Phantom 3 reference here. And typically they like to crush all their competitors with literal, literally no empathy. And in this case, this is US airspace. And they have been banned from doing anything in US airspace with US uh, government officials and any of the federal agencies are not allowed to have DJI drones or Chinese drones. So this is a fight that Parrot actually can win. All right, up next, we have a story about drones pollinating flowers. Now, why is that a big deal? We know that there's bee populations that are really declining all over the world, and we are super dependent upon bees to be able to have all the food that we eat. And if the bees stop pollinating the, the food and all the flowers and stuff, we don't have any more food, which is a real problem. So we have to figure out ways to possibly simulate what those bees do so that we can continue to have the food that we do. And a lot of people are looking at drones for that. And so far it has not been successful because drones are not the gentlest of touch. They've been able to find a, like a really good like ability to have a drone pollinate some other stuff, but then the blades will like abs absolutely decimate the flowers that they fly close to anyway. So it's like, oh, it's pollinated, but it's dead. No matter how you look at it, there's not, there hasn't been a good solution. And there's a researcher named Inhiro Miyako. I'm so sorry if I said your name wrong, brother. But this researcher found while playing with his kid that maybe bubbles will work. And that's what he did. He said, you know what, maybe we can use bubbles to pollinate stuff. And he started doing the pollination with some pear trees and found out just with the bubbles themselves, he could pollinate 95% of the entire orchard, just with the bubbles, and that's without the drone. So they said, okay, let's put these bubbles on a drone and do the same thing again. And we're able to get 90%. Now, one of the things that was really interesting about this story is that one of the hardest parts for them to do this was actually to figure out what was the best soap to use to make the bubbles because the soap can kill the flower too, because apparently everything kills flowers. But the soap can kill the flower, and so they had to get the right soap for the right flower. And that's what's really holding up this technology right now is that for each individual type of plant, you have to have the right type of soap. So it's gonna get really interesting, and it really, really makes you appreciate how complex of a job bees really do for us, is that 
It takes us this much time and effort to pollinate one type of plant, whereas bees pollinate every type of plant? Man, like they're really doing the work. So I mean, I personally vote we figure out a way to save the bees. And you know, this is obviously plan B, but I mean, at least we got a plan B. Hmm? And last but not least, we have a company flying drones indoors. Now, what's the big deal with a company flying drones indoors? Who cares? Well, they flew 200 indoors, Dronesos. I probably said that wrong. They are a company that is specializing in these drone light shows. Now, if you remember, I've talked many times before about the Intel 100, which became the Intel 200, which eventually became the Intel 2018 which I actually accidentally have seen before. I don't know if it was the Intel one or not, but I was actually on a rooftop bar in downtown LA and looked up into the sky and saw probably about a mile off crazy shapes happening in the sky. And I was, everybody around was like, what is that? And I just so happened to know because of this channel actually that that is a drone show that is hopefully gonna be replacing fireworks everywhere because of how ridiculously gorgeous they are. 3D pieces moving in space in any way that you can imagine, in any color that you can imagine, and making any shape that you can imagine. Unreal. And honestly, seeing it in person is kind of crazy because it's complete, you can't hear it. It's completely silent. All you see is just crazy shapes moving and making things in space. It's beautiful. And what's the big deal about me bringing this up to you guys now? The big deal is that Jornia Sales just set the indoor record for flying uh, 200 drones indoor. Now speaking as a professional drone pilot, I will say that is extremely impressive because when you're indoors, flying is significantly more difficult than flying outdoors. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But the biggest, biggest one would be GPS lock. You probably can't get GPS lock when you're flying indoors, which means that you're getting a lot of drift off the drones and sometimes they won't even take off. And being able to read each other, being able to know where they are in space and do all those other kind of things typically has a lot of heavily built-in GPS reliability there. And if you can't rely on GPS, then you're using completely new to different types of technologies that are maybe reading signs on the wall, or reading whatever else is going on, or reading each other. Regardless, it's significantly more difficult to why you have literally one-tenth of the record of outdoor drones being flown indoors and breaking a record. They broadcast these 200 drones as part of the San Giovanni Italian Festival, and you can check that out. There's a video of it because they broadcast it live, so obviously it was recorded, so you should look into that. Droners, thank you so much for checking out this episode of Droner News brought to you by Remote Pilot 101. If you wanna see more, we got them. Check out the YouTube channel, check out Remote Pilot 101's Facebook and YouTube channel because we're out here. And please do your best to make sure you stay fly.